From the morning reading, we want to share a little something from our friends at Shadow Trader that looked at money flow, broad market money flow, and they noted that while money flow is not an indication of short term price direction, it is interesting that the SPY bounced back over the last two days. Money flow did not. And when you look at the chart here, you see the divergence that's occurring. While skeptical of the bounce back higher by the SPY in the past two days, continued bearishness in money flow is one reason why. As the divergence in November followed by a December sell-off in the SPY illustrates, price will ultimately follow the direction of money flow in most cases. Stay tuned. Indeed, when we take a look at the charts on our recent action, and here's the SPX, you know, we see the recent breakout, the abject failure, but then the recovery, and then of course we have this um, hammer yesterday, so some inside action, indecision as to where to go from that. The SPY has been leading and we've been concerned about things like money flow, like the transportation, so look at the transportations, continued significant weakness yesterday, the transportation complex continues to break down, but also the relative weakness of the Russell, the NASDAQ, and then of course the Dow Jones behind the SPX. So you've got the SPX leading in terms of relative strength and certainly this recent breakout and all-time highs and yet some of these areas that we look at such as that broad money flow and transportations that tell us that this is a good healthy market and there's more to come you know just totally lacking so we continue to be very 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 cautious let's get into our regular routine now and take a look at our overnight action then you see on the four broad market indices it was relatively scratch I mean there's really nothing of note here and obviously um, at the time of this cut um, you know nothing it could change before the market open but uh, there is just no real bias coming in from the overnight action crude oil different story there up 1.35 percent euro scratch bonds essentially scratch and gold scratch so really very little action china after the big change in the prior night after they changed margin requirements at one of the big brokerage houses and that always causes you know kind of a run on selling you recall some years ago when silver had a big change in its margin requirements and then you had the complete waterfall fall off after that price totally changed obviously this was a reset and required people to sell and um, and not in an orderly fashion so that's why you get like a six percent fall off in that index Hong Kong essentially scratch Japan scratch J let's see Germany down about half a percent United Kingdom up about a quarter of a percent in terms of macroeconomic reports for today we have the University of Michigan consumer sentiment and Chicago PMI and then uh, the red flag one is before the market opens preliminary GDP obviously this is a series of um, numbers that come out and get constantly revised but it's still they're going to be watching that very carefully as an indication for um, the health of the economy and remember this is even more important to the bond traders right now because they take any sense of the health of the economy as a marker of when the Fed might change the interest rates and start moving things there so this could actually be a pretty significant inflection point in the action for today and probably is very much the reason why so much of this was so quiet last night they're waiting for that GDP number and um, almost like an FOMC announcement waiting to see what that might mean for the future of interest rates in terms of our current volatility obviously yesterday was one of quite a bit of indecision after 
following back-to-back -back significant standard deviation moves. We had the big two standard deviation down, followed by the big move back up. And then um, yesterday, indecision across all four broad market indices to various degrees. Uh, Short-term VIX, 12.23. Implied IV percentiles 18, 8, 18, and 30, all very low across all four broad market indices. You have to keep this in mind when you take a look at this, you look at the VIX ratings and so forth. Uh, while we had perhaps a kind of a shot across the bow in terms of fear coming into the market, it was short term and people were not buying a lot of put protection. So that should tell you something right there. A lot of mixed messages going on in the market right now. When you talk about things like broad money flow and, and where the institutions are and what are they doing, when you take a look at you know how much put protection is being bought, you look at the relative weakness of the indices, you know, on the one hand, you have, you know, serious signs of weakness. And on the other hand, you have no fear. So what do you make of all this? Obviously, you trade the chart in front of you, but you also keep in mind, you know, smart strategies that are associated and in, in parallel with the amount of risk that's on hand. Big picture, we are still phase three, higher highs, higher lows. You have an up a confirmed uptrend with your IBD status. You have a GMI index of six out of six. It doesn't get stronger. And yet on the uh, market postures, you have bearish now. Uh, this is weekly bearish. It's just below 80. And, um, you know, so you got to take that. In, and indeed, while we call this bearish, we could just as easily call this neutral. Uh, you have the S&P and the Dow and the Russell all and bearish market postures. The NASDAQ is very bullish. Uh, so kind of mixed signals coming here. Primary one that we look at though is the S&P and it has crossed. So that is your first warning sign that something may be getting ready to come. In terms of our hedge warning status, zero plus normal with cautionary aspects. You see from the volatility based warnings, it's pretty clean. The only thing really there is this VIX daily squeeze, which can, of course, persist for quite some time. Distribution day count, very low. S&P 1, NASDAQ 2, nothing really to get excited there. SKU's fine. VIX phase is neutral. You had um, new high, new low. Uh, almost 300 on the new lows so that is uh, a bit concerning yesterday and then certainly uh, when we say yesterday was marked by indecision when you look at that hammer you know certainly there were significantly more new lows than there were new highs so uh, that wasn't a great day put in at the New York Stock Exchange you had three of the five risk aversion indicators as flagging risk off so that is uh, another warning that is in place. In terms of specific strategies and their opinions, um, no real change here. VIX is inside the acceptable window. So option income strategies you know, are fine. Just consider that the likelihood for increased volatility, as we've been talking about in recent days, covered call strategies, bullish, but a three to two distribution between in the money and out of the money strikes, put selling, conditions are acceptable, but probably given the fact that we've been ranging um, stay with those put credit spreads with defined risk and consider scaling into positions all the same three opinions there without change in terms of our sector market posture we've got this Christmas tree light thing going um, a lot of indecision being reflected here and um, and even those and we talk about the ones that are most consistent you know, consumer discretionary health care right now, perhaps technology. This one's boosted, of course, by the recent Broadcom announcement. Um, many of these are very flat lines and just one negative day, and these will be all turning red. So there's not a lot of strength and a lot of distance between, you know, current averages and, um, and their lines. So on the percent change yesterday, obviously you see... Um, fairly weak but not a lot of weakness utilities materials health care putting in the plus um, but certainly nothing super aggressive on the plus side there as well so that should be enough for today as always we greatly appreciate uh, your participation with the falcon global trading community your comments 
etc. are most welcome. You can send um, comments to the email address support at falconglobaltraders.com. Also, more information about how we actually apply all these things in our day-to-day -day trading of our portfolio and options trading chat room membership can be found at this website. We have a number of strategies that we work and are in alignment with the current market conditions at all times is certainly what we seek. Performance matters and we get that and you can certainly see on our model portfolio we're up nicely um, for the year despite the fact that the broad market has really been quite range bound all year disclaimers as always hit the pause button if you need more time to review this and then of course we'll see you back here on Monday morning before the market opens thank you